What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the options that I wish I ordered for my G80 M3 and some of the options I actually wish I didn't get. And hopefully end of this video, for some of you guys that are either looking for a G8X platform or building your own, hopefully this video gives you some insight where you can make a better decision on specking your car out, sort of saving yourself some money and also saving yourself some headaches where you're not even gonna use. So in this video, let's deep dive into that. So if you guys are in the process of building a G8X platform, just know it's gonna be a long wait. Hopefully as things come on, things get more speed line. But one of the options that I wish I got for the G80 M3 is the carbon ceramic brakes. The carbon ceramic brakes are something that's geared towards the people that are taking the car to the track, taking the car to autocross, and also geared towards the guys and girls that are OCD. And the reason why I say OCD is because for me, I guess you, if you guys have been watching this channel, you guys know that I'm very OCD with some things, right? Keeping the car clean and brake dust is one of the biggest issues, not biggest issues, but one of the topics that I've brought up is that they produce a lot of brake dust. Sure, there's solutions where you can do an ad to minimize the brake dust, new brake pads, carbon ceramic brake pads, all that. Sure, it's great, but there's nothing like having a carbon ceramics where it produced very minimal you know, uh, components and, and dust in general, you just have to blow it out once in a while with a pressure washer. And then it's very low maintenance because I just washed my car and a little bit later, I'm gonna show you how much brake dust was on the wheels. And this is just me taking it to the supermarket. It's basically a 35 minute, you know, round trip drive there and back and just to enjoy a couple scenic routes. And it already has a decent amount of brake dust. But you have to decide if it's within your budget because adding the carbon ceramic brakes, it's definitely not cheap. We're looking at $8,500 for the carbon ceramic brakes. Um, but you also need to look at with the term of the payments, is it gonna be that much detrimental, right? So you could look at how much more is gonna be per month. And I'm gonna list it right over here um, of how much more compared to adding it on than not adding it on. So that's gonna be the life term of either 60 months or if you guys choose to do the 72 months or whatever you guys wanna do. But that's very different also too when you lease the car. So that's a whole different ballpark. I'm gonna go based on me uh, talking about financing the car and all that stuff because I, that's what I did. I financed the car for um, my own personal preference because I wanna keep this car. Sure, the $8,500 you can save for other modifications, right? You can save it for wheels, exhaust systems, but if something that really bothers you on maintaining uh, the cleanliness of the car, all that stuff, and brake dust is something that bothers you, then you might be able to want to consider that. So the other option I wish I added to the build was the carbon fiber exterior package. Sure, there's many different aftermarket uh, carbon fiber companies. You have various different ones, and they all produce uh, quality differences here and there, but some of them produce really high quality. And later on in future videos, we're gonna get into that. But I do wanna mention that if you're gonna build the car, to add the carbon fiber exterior package, it's about $4,700. Give an idea, some of these front lips from these companies, uh, some of the most expensive ones and some of the most cheapest ones is gonna cost you about $1,500 plus. You know, sometimes maybe close to $2,500, depending on what company. So you add that itself in, in general, plus the other carbon fiber pieces, you're gonna save money in the long term by picking up from the factory um, if you have that option, um, or if you find a, a car that's on a used car lot at the dealerships that has a carbon fiber exterior package, that may go into it. But to be honest, if you're looking for the used car, the more of the most important options are the ones that are the carbon ceramic brakes, the executive package, things like that. The carbon fiber pieces you can add later on, which can justify you, but when, it, when you're ordering a car, you might wanna look into that. That's one thing I wish I did, but that definitely jumps up the price of the total price of the car. Um, but think about now, I don't really regret it too much because it allows me to make content, and content is something I could do for you guys and also give you a better understanding of what companies out there that I would recommend that I would put my you know, name behind because I don't wanna give you guys something that's gonna be uh, subpar to quality wise because end of the day it's gonna waste your money and most of my money too so so those are the main two options I wish I had in the car and if you watched my other video which I'll link in the description it definitely lists the options I have on the car and that would have complete my build to make me more satisfied 
just based on my experience of having the car for six plus months already. I have about almost 5,000 miles on the car. In a future video, we'll definitely do a 5,000 mile review on the car, and we're getting very close to that. And I wanna do that before we start adding these serious modifications, suspension, wheels, and things like that. But we're gonna be talking about one of the options that I think was unnecessary, at least for my personal you know, preferences. I added it on only because I thought it was pretty cool. All right, so now you've seen some of the options I wish I got on the car. We're gonna be talking about one of the options I wish I didn't get on the car. And that option is this low cost option, which would have went into the carbon ceramics, which would have made me justify that price difference. Um, thinking about what I know from my personal preference, because end of the day, you gotta make it the car yourself. And everybody has a different preference, right? Everybody wants to either do something a little bit more differently. And when you build these cars, you're building it to your personal liking. And again, hopefully this video gives you a better understanding when you're building the car or looking for a used car out there, um, you can make a better choice. But one of the options I didn't really need and think about it now, I probably shouldn't have added on. It is a cool option to have if you wanna show off and things like that, which is the M Drive Professional. To be honest, M Drive Professional is something that I don't see myself using. It's a great option, right? If you wanna go out there and play around the streets, but please be careful. There's a lot of people out there that I've been seeing on M3 lists, you know, we're wrecking their cars, um, people picking up their cars, and unfortunately within a few weeks to a couple of months, it's into the bushes, into another car, which you gotta be safe out there. You gotta be smart when you do things. I think something like that, I'm only gonna do when I'm in a private lot where I'm actually able to do that. I don't see myself doing it on the streets, and it's something that, if you guys don't know, uh, Joe Achilles definitely made a good video about it on his YouTube channel. Um, where he kind of demonstrates the different stages. It's a 10 stage traction control system, which is pretty cool for the car, but have I used this since the six plus months ownership? I've never used it at all. So in that video, he kind of displays what the different options are when you go through the 10 stages, how much traction you get, but if it's something that you have a passion for, drifting, things like that, then you should definitely consider that. It's a 900 dollars option. But me personally, I would have took that $900 and put it towards the carbon to my brakes um, because my personal preference, remember this, it's your personal preference. is not about what everybody else wants, it's about what you want. And I like to keep my car as pristine as I can. And that's just me personally, my personality is I would have liked to throw that into the carbon to my brakes. And that would have made me, uh, I guess, enjoy it more. Again, I don't hate the car, I love the car. We'll definitely talk about the full review in an upcoming video. So some of the options I think you don't need to spend your money at all, and also you should overlook, and this is my strong opinion about it, is actually the wireless charge. The wireless charge is a small dollar amount, but when you really think about it, a lot of times when you have a phone, for example, a phone with the phone case, and then sometimes if you guys have a pop socket, and the pop socket's good when you wanna record stuff, so you could just have it one hand, but when you have a phone with a phone case like this, you, you have to take the phone off for, for it to you to utilize that wireless charge. And it doesn't charge as quickly as your traditional one. It is a good backup plan, but that's a $200 option that you could literally, if you need a backup plan, just go to a gas station, pick up a charger that's $15 the max, and you could charge your phone a lot quicker and also prevent one of the biggest issues is that it could overheat because sometimes when you take the phone off, a wireless charging, I'm not sure how the new ones are, but I know I had it on my F80, it got hot. My phone got hot and then it just, it just wasn't ideal. It wasn't more of a convenience, it was more of an inconvenience for me, my personal uh, standpoint. But definitely it's good for people that need the last minute charges, especially if you don't have a charge in the car. But again, that issue could be brought up by going to a gas station, going to a Best Buy, or going somewhere like a Walmart and picking up a charger that's 15 bucks or cheaper. So that's an option I think you don't really need. I think it's something that, it's a cool gimmick and stuff. Oh, you can charge your phone right in the center console, but at the end of the day, I really don't think you need it. It's something that you should definitely overlook. One thing also with the wireless charger is that sometimes these phones are getting bigger and bigger, and sometimes people have a phone that's absurdly big. You know, some of these Samsung phones are getting bigger, and um, I know for the F80, you know, when I upgraded to the new Samsung phone, it didn't fit. It didn't fit in that uh, length. It, was, it wasn't it was big enough. Um, I know my wife's phone, she had an iPhone, and it fit perfectly fine. But again, she had to take her phone case off. So I think that's something that 
Um, if you really need something to pinch, yeah, you can add it on, it's a couple hundred bucks, but still you save the hundred bucks for something else. I don't think it's gonna add value when you decide to sell the car. I don't think somebody's gonna say, oh, you have that option, I want that car now. I don't think it's one of those options. And here's one thing to look at too, right? If you plan on eventually keeping the car for three, four years and you're worried about something that's gonna keep the value of the car, adding the phone charger, wireless charger is not gonna add value to the car, I don't think. Um, I, I personally think the options that are gonna hold value for the car are examples like the carbon ceramic brakes, the specific transmission I mentioned in another video, which is basically the manual transmission, I think later on is gonna be more valuable as compared to the ZF8 speed. Um, I also think that having the carbon bucket seats are gonna be more of a value if you were to sell your car um, three, four years from now. I think it's gonna hold their value more compared to the comfort seats. Um, when it comes to the drive, M driver's package, I don't think that's gonna add too much value compared to those other main options. And you can definitely look at the price points, right? Carbon bucket seats are, are like almost $4,000 and then you have um, the carbon ceramic brakes that are about $8,500. Those are definitely obviously gonna produce more of a value if you were to sell the car. So I'm hoping this video gives you more insight on what options you should get for your car um, when they're either building your car uh, from scratch or specking out your car when you're looking on the used car market, figure out which options you want. Um, I know when I bought my used F80 M3, the main options that were really important to me was the color and also the transmission. Everything else was just a bonus and that car was pretty much base. Uh, but I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm excited for the next couple of videos to come up. Next couple of videos are gonna be what you guys always wanted to see. You guys wanted to see this car lowered and we're gonna get that lowered for you. And also for myself, I, I wanna lower this car. I've been wanting to lower this car. And in, in that video, I'll tell you why it's been taking so long and what's my backup plan. And that's a backup plan I'm doing. I wanna thank Brian from Keys Motorsports for giving me that backup plan while my main plan comes in from overseas. But I think you guys are gonna enjoy that video. I have a lot of special uh, things planned out for the video shoot. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.